Good morning, greetings, and welcome, friends, to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side and clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Fucoid Z, Ultimate EFAs, Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Selenium products, Ultimate Niacin products, any of the longevity products, they're all found at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. We've got blog posts and news stories up as well. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business if you're an entrepreneur, if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you want to make a little spare change, a little extra money, a little lunch money, or if you want to make a living. A lot of folks are making a substantial amount of money by helping share the share the uh, spread the word share the good news about the longevity products and the power of nutrition for a one time $25 fee you can start yourself a business or you can just get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you want to do call 866-735-2470 for more information 866-735-2470 or you can sign up right off the website's brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com Truth Retinol 5% Gel Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream Truth Serum and Truth Balm, all made with generous, copious amounts of premium, fat-soluble, stable vitamin C, as well as retinol, 5% retinol, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, silicon water, emulsifiers, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. And that's one reason why your True Skin Health products will last you months. Our retinol 5% gel probably lasts six or seven months for a jar. You're not going to see a skincare product anywhere that's going to last you six or seven months when used as directed, and you get benefits almost instantaneously. And the benefits also accrue over time. Check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to the bright side. We're talking about tea as I sip on my green tea which I absolutely love. And Beyond Tangy Tangerine also goes great in green tea, by the way. It ups the nutritional value of your green tea and it has a, adds a nice citrusy flavor to your green tea. All tea has got health benefits. I was just reading this morning. Uh, where is this? Daily consumption of tea protects the elderly from cognitive decline. This is published uh, the Journal of Nutrition and Health and Aging from December 2016. Tea drinking reduces the risk of cognitive impairment in older persons by 50% as much as 86% for those who are genetically at risk for Alzheimer's. 
cup of tea can keep dementia away, and that's according to Assistant Professor Feng Li from the Department of Psychological Medicine at the National University of Singapore's Yong Lulin School of Medicine. The thing I love about tea is every, everybody enjoys a cup of hot tea. It's one of those nutritional, it's one of the nutritional, uh, uh, nutritional beverages, I guess you'd say, health beverages, that you don't have to force people to drink. Caffeine gives you a buzz, it tastes delicious, especially if you add cinnamon and honey and clove. I always add cinnamon to my green tea. Cinnamon supports, <clears throat> excuse me, green tea's anti-sugaring effects. Turns out green tea is great for diabetics. There's so many incredible benefits to drinking green tea. Really, all kinds of tea will get you some health benefits. Tea is, uh, as we said yesterday, originated in China as a medicinal drink from China. It went into Europe. Missionaries from Portugal and from, uh, from Britain brought it into Europe. The British were actually the first to go into big-time national tea production. They brought it to their colonies, particularly to India, which they uh, perceived as being able to compete with Chinese, the, the uh, Chinese monopoly on tea. Yesterday we said there were four kinds of tea, oolong tea, black tea, white tea, and green tea. The only thing that differentiates all these different teas is the amount of processing they go through. Black tea is the most highly processed of all the teas. To make black tea, the, uh, the camella sinensis plant, you may have seen that on, your, on uh, some skincare products, on the ingredient decks of skincare products. Camella sinensis is the technical name for the tea plant. To make brown tea, they pick the tea, uh, they pick the tea leaves and they let it sit out and they let it dry. By the way, did you know that the word drug comes from the word dry? The first medicines were actually dried herbs. Drug is the Dutch word for drying. Anyway, uh, tea is allowed to dry and it's uh, crushed up and it's macerated and over the course of time it turns black. Unfortunately, this blackening process or this oxidizing process does take its toll on the nutritional content of tea, and this is why green tea is so much better for you than, than a black tea. Not that black tea doesn't have health benefits. It certainly does. All teas do. But green tea has got more health benefits, more nutritional value because it's treated much less harshly than black tea. To make green tea, you pick the leaves like you do with the black tea, but you give it a quick steam or pan frying. They'll either fry it real quickly or they'll, or they'll steam it and that halts the oxidation process. It kills the enzymes and it leaves the tea with a much more delicate flavor and it allows, uh, allows the color to be retained. The color, by the way, is chlorophyll and magnesium in your tea. Both of those are nutritional powerhouses. And mostly, it leaves the anti Antioxidants, and that's really where green tea excels. This is where green tea is much is a much more uh, is a much healthier product than black tea. It's got superior health benefits because it's got the antioxidants, the so-called polyphenols that we've been talking about. Technically, it has something called catechins, and particularly one type of catechin called EGCG, epigallic catechin gallate, which is called EGCG, and there are tremendous health benefits to this stuff, and it's really, really well researched. It's one of the most highly researched of all the phytonutrients EGCG is. And so in addition to getting just a wonderful, delicate, beautiful taste, you get all of this antioxidant power in green tea. And I always add clove and cinnamon to my green tea just to bump up the nutritional value. You get more polyphenols when you add these spices. There's so many ways that green tea and EGCG support biological activity. It's really hard to know where to begin. For one thing, these catechins, these green tea catechins can help mop up excessive iron and other heavy metals. Excessive chromium, for example. Iron in particular, uh, iron chelation in particular is one of the benefits to green tea and it's been studied pretty well. According to a March 2010 article published in the journal Medicinal Chemistry, green tea lowers iron deposition for iron overloaded mice and because iron is so unstable, iron oxidizes very readily. Oxidation is the same thing as rust and we all know about rusty nails, rusty iron nails. Uh, this is this is really the big problem with iron is it's it's so readily oxidized and this can lead to cancers and of course chelation or tying up chelation is a magnetic attraction. Green tea magnetically pulls iron out of tissues and this can lead to uh, this can be helpful for folks dealing with liver fibrosis or free radicals. Reducing free radicals, of course, has anti-cancer benefits, and anti-cancer is really where green tea shines. We will talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. We'll be back 
right after this. Don't go away. Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or anything we're speaking about here today, if you have questions about tea, green tea, or polyphenols, or vegetation, or botanicals, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to comment on anything we're speaking about here today, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Okay, so continuing on, green tea. Love the stuff. If you're dealing with hemochromatosis or iron overload issues, by the way, iron overload issues need to be regarded first and foremost as a liver problem, not an iron problem. The liver is the organ that regulates and controls how much iron is deposited in the blood. And if any doctor tells you that you got to stop taking iron or you got to stop eating iron or you got to stop taking your supplements because of iron overload, they need to understand that it's really a digestive and a liver problem when you have excess iron. In any case, green tea can help lower iron deposition by chelating or magnetically attracting iron. And this can not only help you with iron overload issues, but it can also have anti-cancer benefits. And this is really where green tea excels. As I said, there's so many reasons why green tea is a wonderful health tool or health, health beverage if you will. Uh, but one of the main reasons why it's important is because of its anti-cancer benefits, particularly when it comes to hormonal cancers. Green tea is used in bodybuilding formulas because it has an ability to lower estrogen levels, and this can also help men dealing with prostate issues, prostate cancer in particular. Over 11% of men will have some kind of prostate issue at some time in their life. Prostate cancer is the fourth most common cancer in the world, following lung cancer, breast cancer, and colon cancer. That's according to the World Cancer Research Fund. And as it turns out, 20% of the world's total green tea consumption is found in Asian countries. And Asian countries are well known for having far less, far less incidence of prostate cancer than other countries. Prostate cancer is relative, relatively uncommon in Asian countries. In a study that was presented at the American Society of Clinical Oncology's annual meeting in 2015, researchers from the Moffitt Cancer Center and Research Institute in Florida gave 49 men with precancerous uh, prostate lesions 200 milligrams of uh, green tea capsules, which had a highly concentrated form of green tea, and compared them to men taking a placebo. And what they found out was that men who got the green tea reduced their chances of going to the next stage of cancer and also had lower PSA scores. Another study, this one from UCLA's David Geffen School of Medicine. This was a National Institute of Health study. 79 men with prostate cancer who were scheduled to undergo surgery drank either six cups of brewed green tea or just plain old water, depending on when they were going to have surgery. They drank it for either three or six weeks before their surgery. Of the 67 men who finished the study, levels of uh, PSA levels were lower after the study and those who drank their tea, drank green tea, men with prostate cancer who, who drank green tea had less prostate tissue inflammation, that's a uh, marker for cancer growth, than uh, those men who were, got the placebo or got the water. That's according to Susan Henning, who is an adjunct professor at the University of California. She goes on to say, we were, a, quote, we were able to show that green tea polyphenols, that's the active ingredients in green tea, reached the prostate tissue and did modify inflammation of the prostate, unquote. And again, inflammation of the prostate is a marker for prostate cancer. According to the World Health Organization, countries like Japan that have high green tea consumption have about three times lower prostate cancer than men in the United States. Men in Japan usually drink, check this out, up to 10 cups of green tea per day. That's a lot of green tea. Green tea, by the way, has around a cup of green tea, has around 30 milligrams or so of caffeine. That's about a third or a little bit less than a third of the caffeine content of the average cup of coffee. So you do get a, you do get a, a, a jolt of caffeine, but it's certainly nothing like coffee. Black tea has about 50 milligrams of caffeine per cup. 
Of course, the Japanese don't just have don't just get anti-cancer benefits or don't have lower rates of cancer only because they drink green tea. They have a different way of living their life. They also eat lots of fermented food, good bacteria. Probiotics also are cancer protective, particularly for the prostate. Uh, Japanese eat a lot of fish, a lot of sushi. They get their omega-3 fats from fish. They get iodine from fish. And both iodine and omega-3 fats have anti-prostate cancer and anti-cancer benefits. There's all uh, there's other reasons too. Probably soy has a, a fermented soy that is not regular soy. Regular soy could be a problem for the prostate, but fermented soy products may be helpful. Ferment, fermented food in general is going to have anti-cancer benefits. Fermented food, of course, will help you process. Uh, fermented foods will help you process other foods that you're eating. Fermented foods help you process toxins. Help you. Fermented foods will help. Uh, will help uh, balance out hormone levels. Fermented foods can help balance out cholesterol levels. Fermented foods and bacteria in general have wonderful health benefits. So it's not just the green tea that gives the Japanese their, uh, their lower rates of cancer. There's other things that they do. But uh, green tea certainly helps. Zinc, by the way, is super important for prostate health. If you're dealing with prostate health issues, zinc 50 milligrams a day is a must-have. Working with fats in general, not just omega-3 fats, but making sure that you're not using trans fats and, and burnt fats and rancid fats, vegetable oils. All of these can create a problem for the fatty system of the body, and the prostate is a fatty gland. But green tea, nonetheless, is a great – drinking green tea is a great strategy for anyone worried about – prostate cancer or prostate health issues. Green tea also slows down the growth of prostate cells that are already there, prostate cancer cells, I should say, that are already there. It encourages the death of cancer cells. And green tea also turns on the immune system, which allows it to activate the production of cells that fight cancerous tumors. And it's not just cancer. It's, you know, there's other prostate problems that men have, BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy, also known as enlarged prostate. BPH is a pretty common health problem. And it's not just older men, by the way. A lot of folks think it's just older guys that have problems with enlarged prostate. Certainly older guys have more problems with enlarged prostate, but younger men can be susceptible as well. According to a 2005 article published in the journal Reviews in Neurology, BPH affects Approximately 10% of men in their 30s, 20% of men in their 40s, 50 to 60% of men in their 60s, and 80 to 90% of men in their 70s and 80s. Basically, if you live long enough, if a guy lives long enough, the odds are pretty good he's going to be dealing with BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy, large prostate. Well, as it turns out, the catechins... The antioxidants, the phytonutrients that are found in green tea, can promote normal prostate size and reduce the risk of BPH. According to several studies, green tea can help regulate hormone production, that is DHT production. That's a form of testosterone that's super duper active. It's really DHT, this activated form of testosterone that's, that's thought to be behind a lot of male health issues, including prostate issues, including male pattern baldness, including acne in younger folks. So Green tea may actually help benefit kids who have acne. May actually help have uh, it may help help you keep your hair on your head longer too, all by helping reduce DHT production. And it turns out that uh, these hormones, these anti-hormone properties of green tea, at least anti-DHT properties of green tea, can also affect the pH, PSA and prostate volume as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll finish up with a little bit more about green tea and then take your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. I want to say a couple more things about green tea. We'll talk more tomorrow about green tea and diabetes. It's another place where green tea, the delicious caffeinated beverage, shines. Helps with lower blood sugar and stabilized blood sugar. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, a couple more things I want to say about the prostate and green tea. If you're dealing with prostate issues, drink your green tea. According to several studies, deep, uh, green tea can help regulate hormone production that affects the prostate help lower PSA, lower prostate, val uh, prostate volume. Urinary symptoms common to BPH, uh, uh, 
benign prostatic hypertrophy include nighttime urination, frequent urination, and then issues with urine flow. Green tea can help with all of that. Reduction of symptoms, of course, will lead to a higher quality of life. These are just a couple of reasons why green tea is just so unbelievably important for men dealing with prostate health issues, of course. And then there's also the prostate cancer, the whole, uh, whole issue with prostate cancer or anti-cancer benefits. All right, so tomorrow we'll talk about green tea and diabetes, green tea and blood sugar, and green tea and breast cancer, and green tea and Alzheimer's disease. So many ways that green tea can provide health benefits. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. From the University of California at San Diego, arthritis drug shows promise for ulcerative colitis. This is a new study uh, that found that people with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis who haven't done well on other treatments actually found relief using Zeljans. That's a drug. Uh, I wonder if I, I think I may have talked about this yesterday. I don't remember. Uh, this is a drug that... Uh, is used to treat arthritis. I've always said using arthritis medication is one of the best strategies for dealing with ulcerative colitis or any kind of digestive health issues, including leaky gut syndrome. From the Journal of Inter uh, Internal Medicine, vagus nerve stimulation provide uh, promising in Crohn's disease. The vagus nerve is your relaxing nerve. It's the major nerve of the rest and digest nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. It turns out by activating this nerve, which in essence is activating the parasympathetic relaxation nervous system, you can actually improve or actually provide yourself with a therapeutic option for dealing with Crohn's disease. You don't need a drug to do it. Something as simple as deep breathing will activate the vagus nerve. Something as simple as taking a hot shower or a hot bath will activate the vagus nerve. Muscle relaxation will activate the uh, vagus nerve. And visualization techniques, relaxing techniques that involve vis visualization can also activate the vagus nerve. And this will provide benefits for, for not just Crohn's disease, but all kinds of digestive health benefits. That's why you always want to relax before you eat. And that's why you don't want to be eating when you're under stress or eating at a business meeting or eating under any kind of traumatic uh, or stressful condition. Uh, in a traumatic or stressful state can suppress the digestive system and actually have a negative impact on digestive health. From the Journal of Royal Society of the Royal Society of Medicine, common cold duration is shortened similarly by zinc acetate and zinc gluconate. Well, it turns out that zinc is a great way, using zinc is a great way to shorten the duration of a cold. I learned this in pharmacy school, and I've been using zinc lozenges as a treatment for myself. If I ever catch, I don't catch colds that, all that frequently, but when I feel one coming on, a zinc lozenge or two can go a long way towards shortening the duration of your cold or even preventing your cold. In fact, using zinc as a supplement is a great way to prevent colds. Zinc and vitamin C are the two most important immune-boosting supplements you could ever take. Sure, all nutritional supplements supplementation is going to support your immune system, but to directly strengthen the immune system, if you're dealing with some kind of immune health issue or, or even something as simple as a cold, vitamin C and zinc are two powerful nutritional supplements that you can use to support immune health. In this study, they compared zinc acetate and zinc gluconate, and they found that both zinc acetate and zinc gluconate worked similarly. The second word after a mineral plays a key role in determining how well that mineral is going to be utilized by the body. So you never hear just zinc, you never hear just magnesium, you never hear just calcium. You always have zinc acetate, zinc gluconate, zinc picolinate, or you'll have, you'll have a selenium monomethionine, or you'll have magnesium glycinate. That second word plays a huge role in determining how effective the mineral is going to be when it comes to taking care of your health. So you always want to pay attention to that second word. As it turns out, zinc acetate and zinc gluconate work similarly, but I prefer zinc picolinate. That's my favorite form of zinc as a nutritional supplement. Picolinate is spelled P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E, picolinate. Also, uh, I like zinc monomethionine. That second word is spelled M-O-N-O-M-E-T-H-I-O-N-I-N-E. Monomethionine form is a little bit pricier, but it's, in, well, I don't, I don't want to say it's more effective. It's probably as effective as picolinate, but picolinate is really, really cheap. And I find it terribly tragic that zinc deficiency is so common when for pennies a day you can get yourself a 50 milligram a day dose of zinc and zinc is so multifunctional it's it's just crazy how multifunctional zinc is for your immune system for your skin 
for your digestive tract. Zinc is important for the production of, of uh, hydrochloric acid. Zinc is important for brain health. It's important for bone health. On and on and on. The benefits to using zinc, which is one of the leading nutritional deficiencies, the benefits of using zinc are so amazing. It, for, for pennies a day, you can get all of these benefits from uh, by using a zinc by getting on a zinc supplement. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Washington and welcome Carol to the Bright Side. Good morning, Carol. Hi, good morning. What's um, going on? You were talking about green tea, and all the tea I can find comes from China or Japan. Japan mm -hmm. for radiation and China for pollution. They can even call organic foods uh, organic over there when they're grown in filth. It's pretty so where it's do you pretty get your bad. green tea? Uh, you know, it's pretty. It's not a good situation. But you can find green. You can find domesticated domestic green tea. I don't. I actually haven't checked where my green tea comes from, so I don't know. But uh, your point is well taken. Interestingly, green tea actually chelates heavy metals, as I was talking about earlier. So a lot of toxicity that typically would be found in in herbs or plants, you won't get when you do your green tea because the green tea chelates these heavy metals, and they won't technically. They may not get released into your tea. That having been said, your point is well taken, and that's just the world we live in, my dear. Uh, water is polluted. The air is polluted. The soils are polluted. The plants are polluted. The vegetables are polluted. Everything's polluted. Human beings are the only species that craps in their water and then drinks it. And that's basically the world we live in. And I don't know how you get around it. You know, our genetic life, genetically mandated lifespan is around 130, 140 years. Forget it. You're not going to make it to 130 or 140 because just how, how trashed out our environment is. Try to make it to 80. Try to make it to 90 and try to keep your quality of life. That's really what it's about. It's about quality of life. And that th your point is well taken. We got a we got a, a polluted planet. We live on a polluted planet. What are you going to do? The benefits do you buy of your own tea? Do I grow my own tea? No, do you buy your own tea? So you yeah. can go home and look at it and then tell us tomorrow. You, you want me to do that? I, I'll tell you during the next break. I'll go during the break oh, and I'll, I'll look. I'll look for <laughs> see where the tea is made. But you know your points. I hear. I hear people talk about sushi that way. Sushi is one of the all-time great power foods you could ever eat. Raw fish. But look at the oceans. Yeah. Look how trashed out the oceans are. So what are you going to do? You know you got to eat, right? So vegetables are the same way. Even if you're growing organic, even if you're going organic, right? The soils are polluted. So you can't keep the pollution contained. That's just the world we live in. But you got to do. You know, you don't want to deprive yourself of the nutritional value of these substances. Uh, and green tea has got tremendous nutritional value. I'll tell you what. I'm going to tell you where I get my tea here. Uh, where my the, the tea I use is grown uh, on our next break. Okay. Uh, after we come Thank back you. from a break. Thanks for your call, Carol. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. I'm looking at my box of green tea here. Celestial Seasonings green tea. It doesn't actually say where the green tea is grown, but odds are pretty good. It's grown somewhere in Asia, uh, Japan, China, North Korea, or South Korea, not North Korea, but South Korea are... Uh, are, uh, are commonly uh, green tea is commonly grown in those countries. Tea is actually grown in the United States too. There's a lot of tea farms in Alabama, California, Georgia. Uh, Florida's got some green tea plants, uh, plantations, I guess they are. Uh, Deland, Florida. There's a company called Green Tea Plants in Deland, Florida. As I look up, uh, look all these green, look up my green tea statistics here. So it doesn't have to be Chinese or Asian, although uh, Asian green tea is abs it's, it's, it's There's a good chance if you're drinking green tea, it's being grown in Asia. So that's, I uh, hope that answers your question there, Carol. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Don in Atlanta. Good morning, Don. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Hey, Ben. Really quick, uh, a niacin flush. What is it? Why does it happen? Okay. And, yeah, uh, that's a great question. It yeah, did it freak you out? What, tell me what happened. Well, I never took niacin before, but listening to the show, I said, let me try supplementing with it, with some of yeah. the other supplements I use. And about 10 minutes after taking it, you got I started the flush. getting a tingling rush in my head. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on? And it moved literally down through my body. It took about 40 minutes to pass through. Yeah, it's and pretty unpleasant. Through it. Yeah, it was it's, weird. It's unpleasant. Yeah, how, how much did you take? Um, 
I'll look while you talk to me. Okay. Nice, the nice and flush is a couple, there's a couple of implications to the niacin flush. Number one, you'll usually get the niacin flush when you first start using niacin, when your body's really deficient in niacin. Number two, you'll get the niacin flush if you take too high a dose all at once. And number three, you'll get the niacin flush. Milligrams. That's a big dose. That's a big okay. dose of niacin. Yeah, that, that, that'll give you the flush, especially if you've never taken it before. The niacin flush is right. vasodilation. It's the experience of blood vessels opening up and blood rushing through to parts of the body that typically don't get a lot of blood, like your tips of your ears, for example. Did you notice it in the tips of your ears or maybe yeah, the, so your, your tips of like my neck and the back yeah, of the ears? Yeah. And the surface of your skin will get a big jolt of blood, and that's what you're experiencing. The, the heat is really blood. It's not necessarily a bad thing because what's happening is your blood vessels are opening up. You're getting more circulation. You're improving detoxification. Where it becomes a bad thing is, is just an unpleasant feeling, and it does take about a half hour. 40, 40 minutes is a long time. Usually it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for it to subside. It is unpleasant. So here's what you want to do. There's a couple strategies. Number one, do a smaller dose. Number two, work yourself into a larger dose. Number three, take your niacin with food, and that will diminish the likelihood of the niacin flush. Number four, use timed release niacin. In fact, that's the best way to get a big jolt of niacin is by using timed release niacin. Timed it, actually release. Is a time, it actually is a timed release. And, you, still, you still got and the flush? It, it was, yeah, and it was, it was 500 mil, time release. I ate it exactly when I first started the meal. So and you I still got the flush? The first. And yeah. you still got the, oh, that's, that's yeah. unusual. Usually, usually food will keep that from happening, and almost always timed release niacin is not going to cause that issue. Uh, there are no flush niacins that you can use. That's another thing, another strategy, uh, and okay. you might want to look for the no flush version. Although the niacin flush doesn't, it, it, as you go through your, as you start using niacin on a daily basis, the likelihood of getting the flush will subside. So it usually only happens right. the first few times you use it, but it's so unpleasant that most people will just not use niacin, which is unfortunate. Right. Because niacin is one of the one of the most powerful of all nutritional supplements. And the reason I say that is, not typically, a vitamin is something that your body cannot make, and that's the definition of a vitamin. It's a, an essential nutrient that the body cannot make. Niacin is the one exception to that. In other words, niacin is so darn important for the body that the body will actually make some niacin if it under deficiency states. It won't make enough, and you can ha certainly have niacin deficiency diseases, but. Uh, it's called pellagra, the niacin deficiency disease. Uh, but niacin is so important that your body will always make a little bit of niacin. And there's a very interesting relationship between niacin and serotonin. Serotonin is your coping hormone. Uh, it allows you to, your, your stress management hormone. Uh, it's not a happy hormone. It's a stress management or a coping hormone. And under conditions of niacin deficiency, the body will actually convert, uh, it will actually make niacin instead of making serotonin. I don't want to get too much into the biochemistry, but your serotonin Serotonin levels will drop under conditions of niacin deficiency. So uh, for folks using Prozac and using uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, it turns out that niacin will allow your body to make more serotonin, and in that way it can act as a natural non-toxic SSRI. So the point I'm making is niacin is so important for the body that the body will actually, it's the one vitamin the body will actually make. So stick with it. If I were you, I'd stick with it. Start with a lower dose. Work yourself into a higher dose. Don't start off with 500 milligrams. Maybe start off with 100 milligrams. And and then maybe do it twice a day and then work it into three or four times a day. Niacin's got so yeah. many health benefits. It's just amazingly, amazingly important. For folks who are trying to quit smoking, by the, the way, niacin is... The second time I used it, it was way less. Yeah, it that's what will happen. Way, way less. Exactly. Yeah. That's what will happen. So stick with it and just keep your, keep your dose low and then work up slowly. I was going to say, niacin is a great okay. supplement for folks who are trying to uh, quit smoking cigarettes. Niacin is similar okay. to nicotine. The chemical structure of niacin is similar to nicotine. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Don in Atlanta. Oh, my gosh. we got Rose here. Uh, Rose, uh, thanks for calling, Rose. Thanks for calling back. I remember we were talking yesterday about uh, blood clotting. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, I, this is kind of a uh, two-part thing. I have was diagnosed with thrombocytopenia last year. I had a stroke, and then they wanted to, uh, after complimenting how clean my blood vessels were, they wanted to put me on the statin, mm. and, you know, and, and uh, which I I wouldn't do that. But anyway, why do they I, want? What was the logic? To uh, there us? wasn't any. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> there wasn't any logical explanation. So. Uh, they, so anyway, they wanted me to take, you know, the aspirin uh, blood pressure med. The blood pressure was going 
up when as soon as I would have the uh, blood cells tapped, you know, the so-called excess red blood cells tapped, then it would go back down. So I, I wasn't taking anything at all. I was just getting, you know, every other month they were basically taking a unit off. And this went on for the last year. Well, all of a sudden, uh, last month I had a heart attack, and then they had to put a stint in. And again, they complimented my uh, how, you know, I had no plaque. Uh, oh, my blood vessels look so good and clean and blood's fine. But again, they want me to take the statin. I said, you know, I'm not taking it. So I, right now I'm just taking the, uh, the baby aspirin. Why, and, why are you taking the baby? If your blood's thin, why are they giving you the baby aspirin? Well, uh, this is my question is, are the red blood cells uh, having, uh, you know, producing... Platelets. It's a platelet issue. Thrombocytopenia means you're not making enough platelets. You're not, your, your blood's not clotting appropriately. Do you get nosebleeds or anything like that or little, little tiny red dots in your a skin? Little, a little bit, but they were telling me it was the excess red blood cell production. And that they doesn't, were tapping, no. They were that doesn't sound right. Pint, they were taking a unit of blood off of me like every other month. Um, cytopenia means li- penia means little. Cyto means cells. That means you're making too little thrombocytes or, or blood clotting blood clotting cells. That's what thrombocytopenia is. Decreased production of uh, platelets. So what you're looking at here is a blood. It, you, it, several things. You're probably looking at a liver problem. That's the most common reason why you'll have thrombocytopenia. And most of us do have liver problems, especially as we get older. So I ask you about your digestive system. The liver being a digestive organ. That's the first thing I always think about. Yeah, that, no, if, yeah, no problem. No digestive health issues. No liver issues. You can't just have a heart attack for no reason. So there's got to be something going on. So what's, that's really going to be your job is to figure out what kind of fundamental health challenges you have. When I say fundamental, I mean your heart problems and your blood problems are secondary. They're not fundamental. Nobody just has a heart problem. That's a secondary problem. Your primary health issues are the blood sugar system, are going to involve the blood sugar system, the digestive system, and the adrenals and the thyroid. I call that the triangle of disease. And these are the three fundamental points the body breaks down. Everything after that is secondary. And it's the silliest medical strategy in the world to try to take care of the secondary problem without taking care of the primary problem. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I believe. believe You've got to work first and foremost on the digestive system system, the blood sugar system, and then the adrenal thyroid complex, starting with the digestive system. And I know you say you don't have any digestive, or you don't know you have any no, digestive no, issues, but you I'm... have to. There's no way you can have a, a blood problem without having a digestive problem. You've got to find where that is. And the only way to find it is to do a food, is to do a, a fast for a couple of days or a swear OV cleanse, and then do a food diary. Now, the second thing is going to be blood sugar. And again, you can't have a cardiovascular problem without having a fundamental underlying blood sugar issue. So you got to work work on the blood sugar as well. It really just comes right down to the basics. To try to take care of the symptoms, that is the leaves of the tree, without taking care of the root of the tree, unless you have an emergency, is just foolhardy. And it's a waste of time, and the only way that you can you, only way you can do it is to, to drug you or to surgically remove something, or radiate or electrocute, thus the tools of the medical model. Rose, I gotta motivate. That's all the time we have for today. I'm sorry if we left you on hold. Call back tomorrow. We'll get you first up. Tell our call screener we left you on hold, and uh, we'll put We'll uh, get you first on the air uh, tomorrow. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.